Since the Roads Must Roll has around 150 different settings, I won't be explaining every single one. I'll only provide explanations where I think it can be useful. The asset located in the top left of the asset browser is the main road modifier. This is the central object of the Roads Must Roll. The modifier is already applied to a curve. You can edit this curve by pressing Tab and dragging the control points. This curve is a NURBS curve because I find it provides the most elegant result. However, you can also use a Bezier curve if you prefer. To create a Bezier curve, press Shift plus A, select Curve, and then Bezier. To enlarge the curve, press Tab, select all control points with A if needed, and then scale with S. Go to the Modifier panel, select Geometry Nodes, Click on the icon for node trees, type Road A, and select this node tree. The road will now be applied to your Bezier curve. Let's now look at the settings in the modifier panel. As mentioned, I will only explain the more complex settings. I believe the rest of the settings are self-explanatory. At the start of each panel, there is a setting called Menu Layout Color. This is only to help you visually navigate through the menus more easily and has no other function. In the general basic settings menu, you find the Lights On option. This turns on the lights for the cars and lampposts. Note, in Rendered View in the 3D viewport, you can only see this if the lighting in the top right is set to Scene Lights. Landscape for Bridge If you make a bridge with pillars and select the landscape here, the pillar lengths will automatically adjust to the landscape. Parking Lanes A small tip. You can also use the first option in the parking lanes to create a narrower shoulder. Ground gap in barriers. This can be useful if you want to add a pedestrian crossing or a bicycle crossing. In the Bridge General Settings menu, you can find the option Left Right Edge, On or Off. You can use this to create an exit ramp, for example, if you want to have another road run alongside. In the Bridge Pillars menu, you'll find the option Gap in Row of Pillars. This extra option here allows you to manually create a gap in the line of pillars if you want to let something pass under the bridge. Please note, if your bridge loops and crosses over itself, the pillars at the bottom will be automatically removed. Cars. General settings. You have the option to select your own collection of cars for the roads must roll. Note that you need to check the following option first. Use a car collection. On. It's also important that the origin of the objects you use as cars is at the center and bottom of the car. This ensures the cars are correctly placed on the road surface. Lines, yellow options. For our friends in the United States, I have also created yellow line options. One small note, if you use the yellow single line, make sure to turn off the white line underneath it first. Besides the main road modifier, I've also created several procedural props you can use to complement your scene. I think most of the procedural props are pretty self-explanatory. You just drag them into the scene and adjust the settings in the modifier panel. Like you can see me doing here with the modifier I created to make overhead signs. Let's have a look at the pre-made traffic junctions I have included in the roads must roll. As mentioned before, when you drag a preset into your scene using Append, Reuse Data, make sure to uncheck Instance in the window that appears in the bottom left right after the import. This allows you to edit all the individual parts of the collection. In some presets, I've placed empties 
to make it easier to move them around. If you select and move these, you'll move everything linked to them in a parent-child relationship. I will likely add more presets in the future. Feel free to let me know if there are any specific presets you would like to see. You can find a link to a survey on the Roads Must Roll website in the description below. I have modeled six cars which are included in the Roads Must Roll. You can also simply drag the cars into your scene like the other props. In the Modifier panel, you can find the options for the cars. This allows you to easily change the type of car and its color. It saves you time when placing cars in the background of a scene. I'll now give you some tips and tricks for the general use of the roads must roll. Tip 1. Do you want to change a certain setting for multiple road segments at once? Then select all the roads you want to change and hold down the Alt key while changing the settings. The changes you make will now be applied to all the roads. This also works for the procedural props. Tip 2. Hover your mouse over a field and use the backspace key on your keyboard to reset a setting to the default value. But what if you want to reset all values of a modifier to default? For that you can do the following. In the modifier panel, remove the modifier and select the same modifier again. Tip 4. I've made tooltips for most settings. If you hover your cursor over a setting, you'll see the tooltip with more information appear. Tip 5. Sometimes it's useful to copy all the settings from one road to another road. To do this, select all the roads you want to adjust. The road whose settings you want to copy should be highlighted in orange. Press Ctrl plus L and choose Copy Modifiers. This way, the settings from the object highlighted in orange will be copied to all other selected objects. Tip 6. If you're building a bridge and your landscape has a lot of geometry, it can be a good idea to use a separate, simpler object as the base for the pillars. Create a simpler version of your landscape and select that object in the Landscape for Bridge setting. Make this simpler version of the landscape invisible in the final render. This will benefit performance. Let's have a look at how you can optimize the roads must roll on your computer so it runs well. As with all your projects, it's crucial to optimize Blender's performance settings before diving into your work. Preferences. If you have a dedicated graphics card, make sure to select it. Render settings. If you have a dedicated graphics card, set the render device to GPU and enable Use GPU for denoising. Adaptive Sampling Use Adaptive Sampling A value of 0.5 works well for faster renders. You can always lower this value afterwards for your final render. For reference, I tested the add-on on my old PC which dates from the year 2012, from the time when animals could still talk. It has an NVIDIA GTX 670 graphics card. Although rendering was slow, the viewport performance was smooth in solid mode. On my current computer with an RTX 3080 graphics card, the add-on runs very well. This add-on is primarily designed for cycles. I don't have much experience with EV for the moment. If many of you are interested in trying the roads must roll with EV, I can see if I can make this work. I've created some performance options in the main road modifier for users with less powerful computers or complex scenes. The performance options are accessible through a dedicated menu, with everything set to the lowest quality by default. Resolution Curve Increase this setting if you have sharp curves or steep inclines in your road. It adds more subdivisions to the curve, making the road appear smoother. If you crank it all the way up, it will of course come with a performance cost. But it's rare that you would have to go higher than 48, I would say. Subdivision Road Surface This is useful mainly for extreme height differences in the road. Just leave it on zero, unless the road surface looks weird. Materials 
level of detail. The highest level of detail for the materials is intended only for close-up shots. Tree's level of detail and low poly cars don't need much explanation, I think. I have some additional tips for people with low-end computers. If the camera isn't zoomed in on the road, you can keep all performance options at the lowest setting without noticeable differences in the quality of the final render. Use the solid view for making changes to the road instead of the rendered view for smoother performance. Crashes often result from insufficient memory. Isolate the section of the road you're working on with the local view functionality or just turn off unnecessary elements in the viewport. You can also hide the modifier in the viewport so that only the curve is visible. I have a lot of ideas about features I could add to the add-on, but I'm most curious about what you would like to see added to the roads must roll. That's why I've created a survey on theroadsmustroll.com. You can let me know there which feature you'd most like to see added. And I've decided to add the most requested feature to the add-on. So don't hesitate to fill out the survey. What sometimes frustrates me a little bit when buying add-ons for Blender is that after installation I have to fix a lot of issues before I can actually start to use the add-on. And that's a very disappointing experience. To avoid such a situation, I have tried my best to test the add-on as much as possible so that you don't encounter any problems during its use. However, if you would come across something that doesn't work as it should, please let me know, I will do my best to fix it. It's not easy to get noticed among the vast number of videos uploaded to YouTube every day. If you appreciate what I do, and want to see more of The Roads Must Roll, feel free to show your support by clicking a few of those buttons below the video. Thanks and see you soon.